Spiking bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. Uh, I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and uh, today we're going to take a look at uh, Gobspark, the Mouth of Mork, for the new Order of War clans, and of course the, the Cruel Boys factions, which seem to be getting increasingly popular. A lot of the stores are reporting they're selling out of the Cruel Boy stuff. Of course, the Stormcasts were super popular, but everywhere I go, everybody's like, "Yeah, it's uh, it's doing shockingly well." So where they might not have sold that well at first, they seem to be gaining a lot of ground with this release uh, this week with all their, their big baddies. So unfortunately, I wanted to do more unboxings for the push fit ones as well as uh, some of the other kits, but it just wasn't in the cards with time, so I apologize for that. But this one seemed to be, of all the releases for the Crew Boys, this one seemed the most interesting, at least to me, because it's a larger kit. It retails for 140, which is similar to some of the other kits out there like Marathi and Alariel. Uh, I think are 138. Um, Teclas is 170. Archaon is 165. Uh, all the greater demons for Chaos are 140. Um, it's some of the lesser uh, characters as far as, I think Bellacore is 142. It's some of the lesser players out there like um, uh, for the what is it? The the Tide Man and uh, gosh, some of the other smaller stuff is you know around 110, 115. I think uh, some of the demons are 115 for chaos. So this is kind of like the mid range that we've seen price wise. Um, and the dragons for Sigmar are actually one, or the, the dragon, the big one, is 156. So it's really going to be interesting to see what they price the dragons at when they, when those guys come out. Uh, Simba and Mufasa, or Simba and uh, Scar, rather. Uh, so this guy, uh, it, it's interesting. This is this might represent a new a new kind of uh, value in GW's design of their miniatures. So, yeah, because I was already looking at the. Uh, the whole um, instruction manual here. So you open it up, of course it's gonna come with, you know, your manual, you're not gonna get any decals or anything like that. You're gonna get two sprues here, which, you know, eh, whatever. Yeah, value and pricing is obviously arbitrary based on what GW thinks, how many you're gonna buy or how many they can sell. It doesn't make sense when kits like this with two sprues are 80 bucks. It, it's not the value of the plastic, it's what GW thinks they can get for the stuff. So I was talking about a little bit of value uh, in the intro here, right? And I think I think that's kind of where we're at with this. Let's get some uh, some good light on here. So, okay, here's what you get in the kit. You're gonna get the two sprues. You're gonna get 130, or is that 130? I can't see. 130 millimeter base, which is uh, obviously quite large. You get to choose between building uh, either Gobspark or the Killer Boss on Corpse Ripper Vulture. By the way, that that noise in that the earlier the intro was uh, allegedly what a uh, Corpse Ripper Vulture makes. I, I can't I can't back that up. I have no proof, but if I had to guess, that's that's obviously the noise it makes. <laughs> you can see here that everything that isn't shaded, of course, is going to be assembled one way, and the things the shaded parts, like all the stuff in green and all the stuff in blue, are indicative and exclusive to those builds of miniatures. Now. Just real, so, real quick, let's talk about this for a second. So, obviously, with the price, GW's never going to lower their prices, right? So, everybody can just chill. They're not going to lower their prices. But what they can do to give more value in their kits is not only offer multiple kit, multiple kit options in each kit, which they figured out, you know, five, six, seven years ago. Hey, if we, you know, try to charge more for kit, if we can make two different kits, then people will be more accepting of it. But I think what people would be even more accepting of is if you can actually build both of the kits out of one kit, which is kind of like what we show you here on the channel. Like, hey, if you just add some magnets, here's all the options to make the other thing. You have to do a little bit of work, but you future-proof your minis because you know with the FAQs and you know with all the rules changes that at some point, the way you built it isn't gonna be the way to run it in three to four years. So if you're if you're in this hobby for the long haul, sometimes it's better to future-proof your minis, which I do for all my stuff, which is probably why you know I don't get around to it as much as I want to. But when I do get it back around to it, chances are it's ready to go, which is great because because I don't have to fiddle around with it anymore to get into the configuration that I need to play my games. And that's kind of where I'm at in my hobby journey is I don't want to waste a bunch of time when I've already bought this stuff and already put it together and quite possibly already painted it by then. I just flip flop a couple parts and boom, I got the configuration I need. Where GW can add more value is to allow both of these kits to be made at any point in their lifetime. 
and we show you how to do it with magnesolotic cases or we show you just add a sprue here just do this little trick and you can do that with your kits but what i like about this kit is you can without doing any of that you just decide um if you want what you want this back banner to look like and then you pretty much have both kits which is pretty incredible if gw does that for a lot of their offerings i think it will bring more value uh to the table for those price tags um that they are charging because let's be honest it's a hobby it's an expensive hobby most hobbies are expensive but you know nobody wants to spend another 140 dollars to get the configuration they need you know two years from now or even 30 days from now when the faq comes out for these guys um because something changed and they built it the wrong way now now i know there's gonna be some of you out there too and sorry i'm taking so long on this that are like well you know what i buy two copies of everything anyways hey that's great vote with your hobby dollars more power to you but the people and customers like that the folks that are like hey i'm gonna buy two anyways you guys are gonna buy two regardless i could tell you 10 different ways to assemble this modularity and make it super efficient and you're still gonna buy two and put them together because that's just the way you are and that's how you vote with your hobby dollars and that's great that's what makes this hobby awesome because everybody has a different way to look at it but for gw's gw wants you to do that right so they're always, they're still gonna get your money the people that are gonna buy that way they're still gonna get your money but to get everybody to get more of everybody else's money i feel like this is the way to go so off my soapbox let's talk about the actual build itself so obviously you know there's a whole bunch of interior like hollow components it is, it is basically a bird after all they have hollow bones this makes sense to me but gw's way with this uh, whole computer design and everything to actually make these things more efficient make this ginormous model fit on two sprues where you know 10 or 15 years ago we would never be able to do something like that so it's it's actually pretty incredible when you start thinking about it all the stuff you can do so left and right halves wing halves here you're not going to want to magnetize the wings because at the end of the day they're almost i think as large as the base so if you can fit the base into your case it, it kind of doesn't matter about the wings at that point uh, the hollow body is going to go on the hollow legs here and i think this tail the way it's curved actually helps balance it on on the uh the little um uh, what is this i guess a log or something like that right uh, so the two halves of the log go together. That is essentially hollow as well. It looks like it has a nice uh, solid base though to kind of glue in. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, you know, what do I, what do I paint first? And I feel like if you're going to airbrush this thing, you're going to want to assemble everything, right? And then you're just going to want to paint, airbrush the feathers, airbrush all that stuff. You might have to do um, a little bit of work here on uh, the log. Y you know, you might have to touch up depending on how you paint around the feet but because the way the feet are and they actually have to be constructed onto this log i i feel like that's going to be probably the hardest part of this build here and, and, I, and i had to do something similar with um my uh my ogres uh on their mammoths because the way that the the howdas and things actually attached there really wasn't an easy way to do it so i just basically painted all the fur and then went in and base coated and did a little light dry brushing on the wood and it worked out fine which is kind of what you're going to have to do up here because this this wooden throne or i guess howda um will glue in and the feet are actually their feet are like foot pedals almost that you actually peg the riders into and they are going to be glued down as well and they're and they're exchangeable for both so um you know at the end of the day if you're going to do the airbrush thing you're going to have to probably just airbrush the feathers and things and get your nice fade going and then kind of come in and pick out the details with the log and just do some light dry brushing uh which is super easy to do because hey it's wood and hey it's wood up here and that's super easy to do so and i think we even have some video tutorials on the channel of how to paint wood i think i did it with my beast claw riders uh which is very similar to this of course not fur it's definitely feathers um, then getting in here, attaching the other wing on, and then all the other accoutrement and accessories, the danglies, the hang-me-downs on the front, and the reins uh, for the, the gut ripper vulture little guy right there. And then last but certainly not least, it uh, looks like his, was that a yoke? I guess that's a yoke um, around his neck. So a lot of different design elements here. I don't, we got foot pedals, we got yokes, we got reins, we got hang-me-downs. I don't even know anymore, but I really like this this is almost on board with what tickles my hobby pickle for for uh, uh sigmar i kind of want to build a guardian army um and i kind of missed out on that um, when it came out but now it's gotten a lot better you know with the new edition and everything but i th i feel like if i was going to build any sigmar army first i need to get my tree people up and running again 
because they have a lot. Whew, they've had a lot of changes. Um, so here is where you pick, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna build Gobspark. So Gobspark has uh, his own head here, and you'll notice this little uh, peg, right? And what's cool about pegs, and a lot of times you want, you actually want to use a peg and a magnet, so that way when you attach the magnet, it doesn't torque or rotate um, when they come together. Because sometimes the magnets can be so powerful, torque is actually a force, and you've probably seen it before, like the, the part actually turns and it won't stay oriented the way you want it. So having, the, having a peg is a great design element in general, and I'm going to show you more about that here when we get it, get it together, because I feel like this is just going to slot in because everything's computer tolerance. Uh, the rider himself, um, or I guess it's uh, Godspark himself, the, the Prophet Mans, he all glues together pretty standard. He doesn't have a lot of interior components or anything like that. Um, but it kind of looks like the Emperor a little bit. Not the Emperor of Mankind, the Emperor like, yes, give in to your hate, yes. Um, that Emperor. So this guy, once you get him all assembled, the whole back banner assembly is its own thing, right? And then that glues onto the throne, but we're not going to do that. And then that guy glues onto here. He's got a butt peg, because why wouldn't you have a butt peg? But that's what's cool about this is this peg and this peg right here allow this to be modular. So once you decide... Well, you don't even have to decide. You just really have to decide what you're going to glue onto the back. Like, where's your commitment level on banners, right? Like, am I going to glue this whole thing and then have to paint it? Or do I want to do something a little kind of in betweensy z because all of these directions right here are the same except for this little part. This little part is the only thing that's different between both of those. So who cares at that point? I don't care. Um, somebody could call me out all day on that one. And then you go to the front here. You, you build um, the, the killer boss dude. And then you can even choose like which, if you want him to have uh, some sort of glaive axe thing or the spear, I think spears are kind of dirty when it comes to these guys and which headdress you want, which you can't really tell from the box that there's actually options. Then you get back to here and you're like, okay, so I've got this like little throny crown thing that I can put on here and this little banner, which is a lot less stuff to paint once you start looking at this. Like, and that probably wouldn't look bad with Gobspark on it or this guy, depending on what you want to do. But the way they designed it is that the curve of the head and the positioning of the rider actually gives this exactly the same bottom half here more dynamic look so it's literally the same except for the rider which that guy's looking to the right and his mounts looking to the right this guy's looking to the left and his mounts looking to the left so just by that little bit of design and of course they tilt it no it's actually the same exact orientation of the part uh it's just wow it's like a it's like one of those old tiny cartoons there it is so now you kind of get what i'm saying so let's well take a look at the sprues first so here's the first sprue and of course you know a lot of people they like to talk mass about games workshop of course myself you know i like to call them out when they do good things and when they do bad things but when it comes to making actual models and the design of models they are so far ahead of everyone else it's ridiculous um the fact that you know this Plastic injection molded sprue has such nice crisp details. I mean, yeah, up here you're, there's not as much detail on some of the, the ends of, the, or I guess these are the pinions of feathers. I'm a featherologist, but it, it, that gives you a lot of space. Actually having less detail sometimes is good because you can blend things, which we've seen in the past, you know, models that have way too much detail sometimes are a little bit harder and daunting to paint. But when you get to the nitty gritty of the stuff, like the faces and things like that, there's no lack of detail. Wood, you know, wood grain on all the weapons and things. And then once you get into the banners, um, I think these are embossed, aren't they? Yeah, these are embossed with the detail here too. Um, and then you've got these little bits and bobs to put on the base. I think there's two little cattails in this little random pile of muck rocks. Um, but again, this is a multi-part kit, so you are gonna have uh, flashing, you are gonna have mold lines to scrape up. It's not easy. Uh, it's not easy to build. It's not easier to build, actually. There's, this is, well, I guess it is. There's a lot more little peg uh, elements and things on here. So I guess it's technically easier to build because they have these little uh, T notches and things as well on it, which I just noticed. So that's pretty neat to see. And lots of these little uh, nubs, sockets, and holes uh, to line into too. But you can tell from this look here at some of the design elements on the base that again, the, while they are detailed, there are still you know some spaces that allow you to blend and do the things in all the layering and the washes that we all love to crack out on sometimes from Games Workshop. But when it comes to you know the the details that matter, like the medallion hanging from his neck and things like that, um, 
it's it's all there and it's all looking super fresh and then like i said between the two builds these are the only two parts that are different they are literally the same with just a different glyph or icon on it so who cares at that point right oh no i can't make that modular because this one little part i, I feel like that's kind of given gw the fluff part but also making it modular which i hope to see more of in the future um provides more value like i like i talked about for way probably too long thank you for listening to that <laughs> um so let's get to the build part okay so here's what we ended up with um which was just basically like building out the throne like i talked about um you glue that on and then you've got the foot pedals which are actually the feet for whichever rider you decide on um, then you've got the reins, the yoke, and all that stuff. But here, check this out. Oh, and all the little dangly do's and things that you're going to want to paint, which you can leave off if you really want to. It, it probably wouldn't look bad um, at all. But what's cool about this, like I said, is that you can, you don't even need to magnetize this. It's crazy because the computer tolerances, you can actually swap these out and it locks in depending on which one you want to do here, like this one or uh, the Killer Boss one, which I kind of think is very much cooler, but I'm not sure how these guys quite play in game yet but yeah it just locks on which is crazy once you start thinking about it so let's switch back to this guy so the real thing that you have to kind of decide on and you can just put your modularly paint these guys up and put them on here because you just get them on this little butt plug and you kind of have to flex up the feet a little bit um to kind of lock them in but once you do it's it's fine um there we go. So now he's doing his little um, Emperor Force Grip thing right there. And that's when you can decide, hey, do I want to glue this on? Which it glues right in. This little part right here locks into the top of the banner. And then this little flat part uh, glues on to the back here, somewhere down in here, I think. But either way, it just, you just figure out exactly where you want it to go oh, there it is that's how it goes so you can glue that on right there or just in be like okay i'm gonna paint it all or paint it all first and then glue it on right there so you know you can do some nice fades on this and then just kind of work the work the rest in with your paintbrush if you really want to or you can just be like hey you know what i'm that's not my commitment level i'm just gonna put this little uh topper the stone topper thing right here on and that doesn't look too bad either and then you can be like, well, I'm done and I'm good. Or you can put this little back banner on here for the for the boss too, if you really want to. And that locks in like something like this. I forget exactly. Oh, there it is. That's where it goes. So you can just glue that right there. And then now you've got that. Um, and you got a little bit of more of a dynamic kind of look to the back of this uh, throne, depending on what you want to do. But either way, like I said, it's, it's super easy to do. There really isn't anything else. You can swap between the two riders to kind of feature proof your thing. Um, which I think is pretty awesome in general. Like there's that guy, pop this out, pop this on. And I was, like I said, I was actually really surprised by that. It's super dope. Um, and then you just figure out what backing you want. So overall, I think if Games Workshop continues to put out multi, the the dual kit kind of big ones, and you can make two different things out of it, and it's easy to do just like this, I think that's a home run because not only does it scratch the, the itch of the people that are like, okay, fine, I can make two kits, but oh, not only can I make two kits, but I can literally make each of the kit whenever I need it for any future proofing or any rules changes out there. So overall, I don't know if it was an accident, I hope, it was specific design on the part of Games Workshop because this model is just dope. Like, look at the dynamic uh, nature of it, the posing, even, um, you know, the way they angle the feathers and this back here kind of really balances it out well. Nice on that, that little log right there and the two extra uh, terrain pieces right there is pretty cool too. And don't forget, you can always use a little bit of the Liquitex resin sand, spread that out on here and it won't recede and it'll make a nice, you know, flat area between all of these elements. And you can even make like a little pond, a little bog or something, and put in some clear resin if you really want to. Um, and, you know, just kind of do get really cracked out on all the terrain and stuff. Um, if, if that's your thing, uh, you can, you know, build up the base and everything. So it actually looks like this texture right here is continued all the way throughout the base. 
this is definitely the way to do it. I don't like the pumice because it seems to recede um, and it doesn't make that nice uh, fine uh, kind of finish and level all the way across here. So that's, uh, we talk about the resin sand a lot. So you can check that out in our links to uh, all the stuff. You can pick it up on Amazon or of course they have it anywhere you can get liquid tech stuff like, you know, Hobby Lobby or, or Michaels or whatever arts and craft store you might have. So uh, thank you very much for watching this video uh, on our unbox and build of the new Gobs Gobspark, the uh, foot or mouth or hand or something of Mork or Gork. I don't even know anymore. But either way, it's the new Cool Boys Big Baddie. Uh, that is a very cool model. Very cool indeed. And I, hopefully uh, we can see a lot more of this value coming from Games Workshop in the near future future so that's it for this one uh yeah just uh you know hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos